now would like to talk to you on becoming a person of influence. In your workbook, the first statement is important. Leadership is influence. In the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, I talk about a couple of laws. One is the law of influence that says the true measure of leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. The other law is called the law of E.F. Hutton that says when the real leader speaks, people listen. What I'm really wanting to share with you in this lesson and in this training series is to understand that, that leadership is influence. Influence is leadership. The person in any given group that has the most influence at any given time for any given reason is the leader of the group. So our goal, since leadership is influence, our goal is to increase your influence. Look in your notes. Increasing your influence equals increasing your leadership. J.R. Miller said, there have been meetings of only a moment which have left impressions for a life for eternity. No one can understand that mysterious thing we call influence, yet every one of us continually exerts influence either to heal or to bless or to leave marks of beauty or to wound, to hurt, to poison, to stain others' lives. So the goal of our training is twofold. Number one, help you better understand influence. And number two, help you increase your influence with others. If you can understand it better, and if we can increase it for you, you're going to be a better leader. So let's do a little bit of what I call an influence inventory. And I've got to ask you several questions in this inventory, such as question number one, who do I influence? And the principle is a very simple one. As a leader, I attract who I am, not who I want. So the question is, who do I influence? Because whoever I influence are the people that I'm going to attract. So here's what I want you to do in your notebook right now. I want you to list the top three characteristics of a person that you want on your team. So I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Write them down. What are three characteristics of a person that you would like to have on your team? Now, I can see by your writing that you already have kind of thought about this. You, you're thinking about the kind of characteristics that you would like to have a person possess when they come on your team. Now, as you write all three of them down, and they're all going to be different, which is good because we have a, an auditorium full of people and they shouldn't be the same. Here's what I want you to notice. Have you got the three written down? Okay, here's what I want you to, i got a question to ask you. Those three things, look at those three characteristics you just wrote down. One simple question, do you possess those characteristics? Because you attract who you are, not who you want. So I run into people all the time, they'll say, you know what I want? I want somebody that is hardworking in my organization. And my first question is, are you hardworking? If you're hardworking, you're going to attract somebody like, I want somebody that has a, a great sense of vision in my company. Do you have vision? Uh, I, you know what? I want somebody that gets along with people. Do you get along with people? In other words, <laughs> this is kind of disgusting, isn't it? We don't attract who we want. We attract who we are. Birds of a feather flock together. So the question, who do I influence? I love Woody Allen's quote, I would never belong to an organization that would have me as a member. <laughs> When I went to San Diego, California to pastor Skyline Wesleyan Church, I followed Dr. Butcher, who had been there 27 years. He was the founding pastor. He was a great musician. So guess what? When I went 27 years after he had founded the church, guess what the church was full of? Musicians. Because he was a musician. Like begets like. Now, I'm not a musician. <laughs> I'm a leader. 14 years after I pastored the church and I leave, guess what the church is full of? It's full of leaders. We had hundreds of leaders. We had leaders all over the place. We had leaders just looking for people to lead. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> had a bunch of bossy people is what we really had. But we, had, we were full of leaders. Why? Like begets like. Jim Garla, who's doing a great job. Church is bigger now than it ever was when I was there. He's an activist. Guess what he has now? He has a church full of activists. You see, like begets like. So therefore, when you ask yourself, who do I influence? Here's what I want you to know. It's like looking in a mirror. 